All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're gonna to be going over how to get a properly signed SSL certificate on a Synology NAS. And what this will do is this will mean that you stop getting these, this certificate is not trusted errors. So I'm sure you've run into this the first time you open up Synology DSM and you're using HTTPS and it says, this connection is not private. We're gonna talk about that here. Really, this is mostly going to be useful for if you're sharing things on the internet. We're gonna talk about the fact that you actually have to open it, your NAS up to the internet. And so really this should be used for cases like you're wanting to host a website or you're wanting to use Synology Drive to publish public links and things like that to your company's URL and other things like that. This is not something you wanna do if you only are accessing your NAS on your local network. Technically you could, and I'll leave a couple of like, hey, this is how you would do it. But for 95% of people, you don't wanna do that. If you're only ever accessing your NAS on a local network, honestly, just accept the certificate and don't worry about it because it is just as secure. I've got a complete video that goes over SSL certificates, so I'm not gonna rehash it here, but this is really for somebody who wants to be able to share files or host a website or anything like that, open up a Docker container to the internet. And you can use access control lists to limit access as well. So you do have a very robust system in terms of what is and is not allowed in, but I wanna get that out of the way at the beginning. So to do this, we're gonna be using Let's Encrypt. And for that, we're going to need three things. One, your ISP, the internet service provider who gives you internet, has to have given you a public IP address. If you don't have a public IP address, you're not going to be able to do this. The easiest way to tell if you have a public IP address is to go to what is my IP address to look up what the internet thinks your IP address is, and then check what your router thinks your public IP address is. That's a quick and easy way of telling if you have a public IP address or not. And a lot of times, if you've got a internet service provider who's newer in the game, they've not been doing it for very long, they might not have enough public IP addresses to go around. And so they're giving you what's called CGNAT or carrier grade NAT, where you don't actually get your own public IP address. You and 50 of your neighbors all share the same public IP address. And the reason we need this public IP address is we need to do port forwarding. You do not need a static public IP address. You just need a public IP address. So that's number one. Number two is you need the ability to do port forwarding. Specifically, you need to be able to forward port 80 on this. This is what Let's Encrypt uses to verify that you own a domain. So if you don't have the ability to do port forwarding and specifically port forwarding on 80, you are not going to be able to do this because Let's Encrypt uses that for validation there are other means to getting a signed SSL certificate, but Let's Encrypt built into DSM requires port 80 to be open. And the third thing you need is you need a domain. So for this, I'm going to be using site.spacerex.co, but you need your own domain to be able to set this up with. And you can actually set this up with five or six subdomains. So say you want to Plex and Docker and all these other applications to be exposed to the internet, all on their own unique public URL. You could have plex.spacerex.co resolve to your Plex server and have a certificate for that. So you can actually repeat these settings as many times as you'd like for as many domains as you'd like and subdomains. All right, so now with those three things out of the way, let's go about talking about how we're actually going to do this. So the way Let's Encrypt works is pretty simple. Let's Encrypt is an awesome nonprofit that is actually used to get more people signed SSL certificates. And that is what the backbone of the internet is really. Signed SSL certificates prove that you own your website and that anybody coming to that website knows that nobody else could be faking that they own that website or have created a fake website at a coffee shop to steal somebody's passwords. That is how signed SSL certificates work. They encrypt the traffic using a public and private key that is used so that only the person who is verified that they own the domain is able to decrypt that traffic. And so to get our signed SSL certificate, we have to prove that we own our domain. And in this case, it is a subdomain site.spacerex.co. The way Let's Encrypt works on DSM is very simple. It uses the port 80 open proof to show that you own your domain. So essentially, if site.spacerex.co 
resolves to the public IP address of your router, which is then forwarded on port 80 to the IP address of your NAS. Let's Encrypt will see that not only are you at the IP address that site.spacerex.co is, but it will also see that port 80 resolves to the box. This is proof enough for Let's Encrypt to say, yes, this guy right here owns the domain site.spacerex.co. This NAS owns it. We are going to give them a signed SSL certificate proving that they own it. So now with that signed SSL certificate, my NAS can prove to anybody in the world that is coming to site.spacerex.co that yes, they own it, they are trusted, and my NAS has full authority and you should completely trust it and we will get the lock without the warning for DSM. Okay, so now the very first step that we need to do is we need to make sure that our domain site.spacerex.co or whatever you've got in your case always resolves to the public IP address of a router. And there's two different ways we can do this. If you're like the vast majority of people, your ISP probably does not guarantee you a static IP address. What this means is it may be once a week, it may be twice a year that your ISP may change your public IP address. And there's a ton of reasons for that. They change pools, they do whatever. But if you do not specifically pay for a public static IP address, it's probably what's called a dynamic public IP address. And this is not a big deal for our case because the NAS can handle it very easily. But if you're like the vast majority of people and you do not specifically have a public static IP address, you're going to need to use what's called DDNS to make sure that no matter what happens, your IP address updates. So what we want to happen is as soon as our ISP changes our, our public IP address, we want to make sure that our NAS updates site.spacerex.co to follow that IP address. And that's good because while this is not technically about web hosting, that's actually coming in a separate tutorial, you don't want to have to log in to your DNS server every single time your ISP changes your public IP address. All the meanwhile, nobody can access your site. So we're going to set this up completely automatically and it's really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the built-in DNS server under external access, DDNS, to handle this. So what we are going to use is we are going to use Synology's free DDNS server to be a middleman. So I'm going to choose an arbitrary name. Nobody's ever going to see this. This is just a middleman in the DNS circuit. So I've just chosen SpaceRex demo one, two, three, dot Synology dot me. And right here you would see your external IP4 address. And if we were just using this, we could also use the Let's Encrypt certificate right here, but we are actually not using this because a lot of providers don't have access to this anymore. So that's all we need to do is pick a random value. And now we know that spacerexdemo123.synology.me is a URL on the internet that is going to follow our NAS around no matter where our router's public IP address changes to. So if every morning your ISP gave you a new public IP address, this within about five minutes would update to that new public IP address. And that is exactly what we want to happen. This way all automatically we can have it. But you probably don't want to use this Synology.me that we just created. You want to use your own custom domain. So that's the trick. We are not going to point our site.spacerex.co to our public IP address right here as that is subject to change. Instead, we want to point it to, in this case, spacerexdemo123.synology.me. That's because we know that spacerexdemo123.synology.me is always going to follow our public IP address. So what you're going to do is you're going to log in to your DNS provider. So this is most likely whoever you own your domain with. If it's somebody else, find out who that is. You would have set that up. And I want you to create a record called a C name. A C name basically points to another domain. So in this case, we would create a C name from site.spacerex.co pointing to 
spacerexdemo123.synology.me. That basically means, hey, site.spacerex.co is whatever IP address spacerexdemo123.synology.me says it is. So nobody will ever see spacerexdemo123.synology.me unless they want to look up your DNS records and they will see it then. But no browser will ever show it or anything like that because it's all automatic. So I'm not going to do that here. I've actually already done it on my end. And so now the end result is whatever domain you're using, for me it's site.spacerex.co, is going to always be pointing to your public IP address. Step two is to log into your router and port forward 80 to whatever IP address the NAS has. So there's a million different ways routers do port forwarding. Look up the brand new router, figure out how to log in. I've got a tutorial on the generalness of port forwarding and explaining all of it. That'll leave a link down in the description below. But really, you've just got to figure out how your router wants to do port forwarding. And in this case, I have port forwarded two additional ports, 80, 443, and 5001. That's because I'm going to be running DSM for this demo on this site.spacerex.co to show you we get that signed trusted SSL certificate. So all that's actually required is 80 and TCP, but also port forward any other ports you're expecting to access remotely, most likely 443, which is used for HTTPS. So now that we've done that, we can come in to our security tab, certificate, and what we're going to do is we are going to add a new Let's Encrypt certificate. We're going to generate it from Let's Encrypt, give it a name. And now we just put our domain name. So this is what has to match up with your public IP address and be forwarded to port 80 on your router to your NAS for this to work. And then an email. This email is just going to send you an email if your certificate does not automatically renew. We're not going to use wildcards here, but they are available. And now it's normal for this to take about a minute or so. So we're just going to sit back and wait. And if we've done all the steps that I talked about and site.spacerex.co points the public IP address of a router and our router is forwarding 80 to 80 TCP to the NAS, then this will come back with a signed and valid SSL certificate. After that, I will tell the NAS for all default traffic, use this signed SSL certificate. That's because there are multiple services that the NAS can run. It can run VPN server, Synology Drive, Active Backup for Business. All of them have the ability to use a different SSL certificate because you may be using a different name for each of them. Maybe you use abb.spacerex.co. Well, that certificate would be different than this certificate. And just like that, our certificate is issued. This is now a signed and trusted SSL certificate. This means that any modern browser that gets returned this certificate while going to the URL site.spacerex.co is going to trust it. It is going to trust that it is correct. And now to use it, we can go ahead and go into settings and say that our system default is going to be this. You could also use it for Synology Drive. There's a whole bunch of options here, but this right here is our system default. And so this is how I'm going to show you it does work. So I'm running DSM HTTPS on 5001. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that. And if you look right there, we can hit question, show certificate. My browser trusted this entirely and any other browser would as well. That's because this certificate is signed and valid for our NAS. So just like that, we do not get that this certificate is not valid and everyone's web browser will automatically trust it. All right, so now that's the basics. We have now got this signed SSL certificate. The one last thing that we need to know about is the fact that it is only valid for 90 days. That is how Let's Crypt works. And so they only give you a 90 day certificate. The way Let's Encrypt works is it is going to automatically renew 
after 60 days. So you can test the renew right here by hitting renew certificate. But as long as you keep port 80 routed to the NAS, it will renew just fine. If for whatever reason, you are not opening up 80 to the NAS constantly, people do this, you can do that. You can actually go in, set yourself a calendar reminder every 60, 75 days to go ahead and manually open up port 80, hit renew and close it back down. That can work, but if you are planning on just leaving this open and using this for Synology Drive or something, that is exactly what you can do. And it's very easy. You don't even have to come in here and hit renew yourself. It will automatically renew. And by the way, we can do the exact same last certificate settings that we did for any other domains that we own. You can have 30 certificates in here. I actually don't know the maximum, but I've never hit it. So you can keep generating certificates for all the different websites you want to run and be able to choose the specific certificate used for every single one of them. Finally, if you really wanted to sign SSL certificate, but did not want any external access to your domain, one thing you could do, and I'm just going to hint at this because it's kind of for more advanced users, and so if you know DNS, you can totally do this, is you could actually write a DNS record on your router or wherever you're running DNS that says site.spacerex.co points to the local IP address of the NAS and then automatically do your renew every 60, 75 days yourself. That way you can leave the NAS not externally accessible. And when somebody types in at your house, site.spacerex.co, they will still get the proper lock because even though the web page is not publicly accessible, it's only locally accessible, it still meets all the requirements for our computer's web browser to trust it. So, that is something people will do. It's annoying, but if you really want a signed SSL certificate for NAS that's not publicly accessible at all, that is what you have to do. All right, so that's gonna be it for this tutorial. I do wanna mention one last thing here. Everything we just did there does not actually make your NAS externally accessible except on port 80, unless you did what I did and open up port 5001 as well. That is an entirely separate topic that is not actually covered in this tutorial. People have seen my previous tutorial on this and were confused why they could not log in NAS with site.spacerex.co. That is for a whole different video where I've got to explain a lot more stuff. So that is going to be in a separate video. Well, that's going to be it for this tutorial. If you have any other questions or you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below and put your questions down in the comments below. All right, have a good one. Bye.